Hey guys, my name is Liam Kennedy. I'm a salesperson over at Car Pros Kia of Huntington Beach. And we have received the first 2022 Stinger in all of America, basically, at this point. Some uh, Japanese and uh, Korean, I believe, actually, I don't know exactly where they're released, but not in America, have a couple of these so far. But I wanted to take a video and introduce the American version to everyone. This is the GT2 all wheel or rear wheel drive in the brand new ascot green color i'm just going to set my phone down to do the cold start with it since it does have the new exhaust system as you can see it's real exhaust tips inside of those facade ones but they altered it so that it has a physically changing sound to it so let me set this up so you can get a good idea for the sound on it It doesn't seem to have much of a difference to the old 2020 and 21 versions so at this point let's do a walk around and get a good idea for everything that's new with the car I'll point out as much as I can that I know about so starting with the tailpipes that I mentioned they're larger and more circular than the last years as well as a full LED tail bar that's been changed as well so the lights will go through the whole top in as well as right through the middle part there there they cut up with the O circles that we're used to so now it's just across the top similar to what I think is like a charger look these are one of the wheel versions that they have I believe Kia is going to be releasing three different wheels some spread between the 2.5 and the 3.3 I don't know which are going to go to which but this is the regular version that comes on most cars if you don't order any specialty packages. Other than that, the trim seems very similar to the last year's. There is gonna be a new carbon fiber package, but we do get the new Kia emblem on the outside hood of the car. Same style mirror caps. This is the GT2, like I said. So we'll go on the inside next where I find there to be the most noticeable differences. Starting with the back, you can see they added this new design on the inside of the armrest, which I think is very nice. Other than that, seats, a, a new design on there, but not the diamond quilt that I've seen in some other ones. From what I know, that's gonna be an option on the Meisner which is the 2.5 top trim. Other than that, still comes with the Harman Kardon sound system. Like I said, this is the GT2, so you get the power lift gate. Trunk looks the exactly, exactly the same as it did before. You still get the, oh, actually, did they, am I, oh, the spare's underneath now, I guess, in the middle, so. You still get a spare, no tire inflate kit tire mobility kit I guess they call it as far as the sticker goes it looks like pricing is a little higher than what it was in the year before at 52.5 and some change I just wanted to pause the video to look over the exact features we can go there just to point out some of my favorite things that I saw there's the electronic variable exhaust valve which I only notice when I'm driving. Cold start still won't make your angry neighbors come after you, but other than that, it does become pretty loud compared to the last version. Let's take a look on the inside. That pattern that I talked about flows into the front as well with the same design on the seats. Starting in the front, it screen's the same seven inch size. We don't get a full LED cluster like you see in some of the 
newer models like the GTK5 and the Sorento SX Prestige, but you do get a couple different themes, which from what I see on the typical miles per hour screen, they don't change the look of it much. There's theme A, theme B is like a green and orange version. Theme C being, I think it's meant to be a little more natural looking, almost like a sunset or sunrise at the top. Switching over to the race gauges on this side to see what the changes look like. There's theme C, theme B and A. So I guess it just changes the color of that one line on top and then the style. A little bit if you notice on the parking symbol as well to get a little more gradient on there. But each option seems just to do a little bit of differences. Nothing too drastic, but it's nice to be able to do little changes like that on the car. The center stack looks to be exactly the same, a rollover from the year before. But you do get an extra line of stitching right here along the leather, which I think is a very nice touch and matches the one on top from the last year. There you can see the armrest with those flowing lines, which looks nice. You still get the same sized sunroof that we did in the other years. visibility still is pretty good one of my favorite things that i've seen is you do get a frameless mirror right here from what i see on the top it looks like there might be extra movement zones for it maybe it's electrically moved i haven't seen at this point how to do that you can see the home link buttons on the bottom i think i must have pressed one so it shows up on the screen like that memory seats i'm gonna pull it out of the back and uh take it on a test drive and then we'll dive into the infotainment a little more to get an idea of what this bigger screen can actually do see you in a bit all right so i don't have any fancy youtube recording equipment so i'm just gonna stick this in the cup holder when i take it out for the drive but i wanted to point out how nice the 360 view camera looks on the larger screen that they have it's super clear and i think that without this i probably wouldn't be able to drive any cars as well as i do now but i'm going to take it out for a little drive and uh i'll try to explain the differences that i feel between the 3.3 in the 2020 and 21 years and then this new year last night when i took it out for uh, just a, a short uh drive i did notice there were a few differences on the car uh, basically just stuff um, uh, generalized like a little better on the handling the suspension I believe was changed a bit so I felt in sport mode it drastically felt a little bit more like a rally car versus a, a comfort luxury sedan but I'll take it again, out again right now and uh, put it into sport mode to see exactly what I noticed the difference between typical comfort mode which I feel like it's still a very comfortable ride compared to the old years where you know it still is a little bumpy around the way this one definitely upped up a little bit with uh, giving you a little better um, you know cornering and such like that of course the all-wheel drive if you opt for it is gonna give you a little better traction if you're really racing around the corners but we'll test it out for ourselves and uh, see how it how it feels Uh, as far as other things I noticed in the car, except for the little physical details in the larger screen, the, the car is primarily the same thing as last year. I think what they're just trying to do is uh, focus a lot of the changes on the 2.5 version of the car, since that's going to be the newest addition to the Stinger lineup, and hopefully uh, just give us the introduction to some new packages and options that we'll see transferred into the 3.3 in a couple of months to the year but um, here we go I'll turn it on again so I can point it out you do get the blind spot monitoring on the inside of the car right there like so which is a feature that I've uh, been looking forward to for a while but aside from the larger screen stuff like the sound system the seats um, auto hold stuff like that 
when you drop it into sport, you still get the clench on it where the bolsters inflate to hold you in a little better. I'm gonna roll down the windows at some point so you can see if you notice a, a bit difference in the sound of the car from the exhaust. But I do like the new logo on the steering wheel, the Kia logo like this versus the old uh, just Kia right there. This seems a lot more luxury. I feel like they're only gonna put this logo on a couple of the cars that they release for a while since they wanna sort of mark them as what I like to call the new Kia. Uh, vehicles that um, uh, you know just uh, sort of fall to a higher class with certain features that they're not going to give to other cars. I'm going to give it a, a, a first pull right now and see how it feels. Okay, it, it has some power. I really want to wait till I can uh, shoot it around a corner to get a full feel for it since I was probably about a 30 roll something but uh, I'm coming up to the light right now and then we can get a feel for it. Or I guess just me, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to feel through the phone at all, but... We'll see what happens right now. I'm just as excited for this car as uh, some of you may be since I've been waiting for it for almost two years now. Sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, I, I drive the 2.0 GT line right now, so my, my opinion might be a little biased on how the engine feels compared to the last year since I only drove the 3.3 a couple times, but uh, it's, a, it's a fast car. It's a really fast car compared to what I'm used to. And from the 3.3, uh, maybe a little early shift. For you that are already used to a car that has this power, don't mind my reactions. I'm just, I personally, I, I love this compared to when I'm used to. I was driving a, a Ford Fusion Energy, which is a plug-in hybrid. So, something that performs and sounds like this is, is a big, big upgrade to what I'm used to. But when I go around the corner here back to my lot, I'm gonna try to keep the window down and put the phone close to the outside so that you might be able to catch the difference in the exhaust if you notice it maybe you won't maybe I, I there isn't a difference and it's just me thinking there is but let's put it around and definitely not a, a GT Mustang but I, I like the engine note it feels very very subtle but it's deep you know it matches with the feeling and experience of the car something too loud would take away from the luxury aspect that I think this vehicle possesses so when you really do want to floor it and and get that race car feel it does give you that engine note I think it still does play through the speakers which was a feature that they had for the last two years where you would have um, uh, just an engine note play out around the cabin to give you a feeling so maybe even that sound that we hear isn't from the engine itself it's just from the speakers but with the introduction of the new exhaust I would assume that it would be an actual physical upgrade as well that they would do for the car so I'm gonna pull around and go back to my lot and uh, once we get back I'll go over the infotainment system a little more and uh, if you have any questions or want me to make another video dipping into something else that you I didn't pose or show in this one uh, please give me a comment I'd be happy to introduce you guys to whatever you want to see you know I'm happy looking around and showing off this car it's something that I would be you know I'm happy to do so uh, I'll see you in a bit all right so I'm back and like I said I'm gonna give a little video of the infotainment uh, so as you see, it's the bigger screen, and I believe the infotainment is going to be almost identical to what you see on the new Sorento and the K5. Um, just to go through it, it gets uh, this theme as well as a couple different guests, so different drivers can have their seats and mirrors automatically saved to whatever profile they make. Other than that, um, there's a new valet mode. I'm going to go into detail with the... Um, more the physical things that you can change with the car itself. 
So when you go to the setup of the car in the vehicle where before they had the active sound design, they have the same options, but you know, you can turn it off and you won't get that engine note that you heard in the video and then set it to different levels. I just set on strong the whole time. Other than that, the cluster is a new, uh, like, uh, new for the car. So like I was showing off in the beginning of the video, you do have three different themes that you can choose as well as different content. Other than that, most of these commands look about the same. One thing you can't see right now, uh, if you looked at my uh, video I posted last night when the car first came, they did add an extra line of LEDs along the top, which I thought was a very nice touch. I did listen to the Harman Kardon system, uh, set to the same preferences I have in my Stinger now, and uh, not much of a change there, but most of the commands and such on here are going to be the same. They just uh, upped it to the bigger screen with Kia's newest infotainment. It looks like we're still going to be using wired Apple CarPlay. No wireless with the new screen, unfortunately. But other than that, I think that it's a very nice change. For the up in price, I think that this is something that's personally worth it. Something that biggest, I was just waiting for the bigger screen. That was the one thing that was really going to do it for me. And now that they have it. Uh, I would have wanted the larger sunroof that goes all the way to the back that they have in the K5 and the Sorento. But other than that, the frameless mirror, the new stitching, larger screen and designs on the seat and door panels. As well as the new logo for people that don't want to be driving a quote-unquote Kia. This is something that is definitely new and improved. So, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment, and I'll be happy to go into more detail. Bye. I know that I had already said bye, but one last thing I wanted to add was this uh, new color in the light. It's not very clean right now, but... As you can see, it's uh, at night, and even in the shade, it looks like a flat green, but it's actually, surprisingly, they added a, a pretty good amount of pearlescent in this car. But still, as you can see towards the back, it's uh, not even really an army green. It's more of a, a blue green if I had to put a name to it. But I think they did a pretty good job with this color. This with the brown interior. I think that'd be pretty perfect like that. But see you guys later.